Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you for watching again. Um, my name is Jane Must, and I am the engineering manager at Daily. And thank you for for showing up. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy this live stream today. Um, today is going to be part two of a series that we've been doing and in case you missed part one don't worry part one was sort of part zero it was mostly an introduction about what we're going to create and uh this uh this episode we're gonna i'm gonna show you what we've created and how we created uh the join call methods in in daily and how we set up our 2d environment for our spatialization demo now, if you've missed the first part, you might wonder, what is a spatialization demo? What do you mean with 2D environment? Um, I'm, I'll am i share you what I shared last, uh, last week, but uh, in, in like two minutes instead of 45 minutes. Uh, so let me start with, uh, let's see. This is the block that we're going to sort of follow along. Uh, I We're gonna, as it says here, uh, it's setting up the daily call in our spatialization demo. Um, and uh, it also says it's like a part two of the series, but okay, what is the spatialization demo? So that is this thing. Um, so you have a room, you have a name, and you click start demo. If you don't know how to set up a room or set up a name, oh, let me just retry this for a second. If you don't know how to set up a room or uh, create your own daily accounts, then you can watch uh, one of the first vlogs where I explain all of this. But you can also just go to daily.co and just go through the docs. They should be very helpful. And if they're not, let us know. So you click on start demo. I reset it because it again got my OBS camera for some reason. And what we're making is this 2D environment where you can walk through with uh, with your your uh, arrow keys, um, and you can hear people around you. And the closer you get to people, the, the louder you get to hear them. And then we also have separate rooms. So if you go into a room, you uh, go to the top right and more, the more people join, the more people are, are in this, in this view. And then, uh, you can only hear the people in the room or the person that is uh, broadcasting to everyone, like what I'm doing right now. And there's also these furniture here, like this table in the middle where you, where you cannot pass through. So you can, uh, make a lot of fun things with it. Maybe even a maze or something where you can have riddles. I don't know. It's just something I could put up. Um, and then you have these buttons on the bottom where you can mute your video, you can mute your audio, and you can uh, start your screen share. And screen share only works when you're actually inside of a room or broadcasting, of course. So, um, Today, I am going to show you a little bit of this, but mostly code. So uh, there's a lot of code in this, uh, in this, in this demo that we created. Um, and I'm just going to go through the whole demo bit by bit and show you how it works. As you can see, I'm here. I'm on the main branch. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, so this is basically when you clone the demo. Um, so if you clone the demo, which is uh, explained in the first part of the blog, by the way, I, I can share a link of the blog post in the chat here. Um, I don't know, my, my copy pasting suddenly doesn't work anymore. Uh, maybe, maybe someone else wants to share the blog post. <laughs> um, why doesn't this work? Oh, never mind. That's another deep. I'm not gonna debug OBS. Uh, so 
this is part two, part one. Like I said, uh, it has an uh, explanation on how to get started and clone the spatialization demo that is public on GitHub. And if you clone this, if you run this command, then you get exactly what I have with a small change, which I will explain later, um, which I can explain now, by the way, I have I created a, a, a file for my room token because I wanted to have a private room so not everybody can join, which I then uh, edit in the join room, which I'll show later as well. Here, of course, which is in the room file. So, which is, I thought I added it. Maybe I didn't add it. Well, it still works right now. Um, let me just, this is confusing. Okay, uh, I do not recommend creating, uh, making uh, these, uh, token files of course you want to you don't want to commit that into github so but this was just a quick and hacky way uh quick and hacky way to make this private room uh working for me so let, let's let's get started uh we have here on the side oh, here on the side all the files, of course, and then we have the index.html file, which has all the HTML that is needed for when you join the room. So we have this header, which you don't, of course, you don't need if you don't need to, but there's like a link to the API docs and everything. And then there's the join part, which is uh, this part. So there's a form called enter call, there's a, an ID and uh, there's a, a text input and a URL input and a button demo, a button, uh, sorry, I, I read button demo. Uh, there's a button, there's just a button, a start demo button. That's what I was, what I was trying to say. Um, and then we already have created some elements that are mostly empty for, uh, that are, uh, that are now hidden that will show up once you join the room which I will show later when we are going to uh, use them. The entry point of this file is a TypeScript file. In case you're not familiar with TypeScript, this is to uh, make your, uh, your codes a little bit more safer and sometimes easier to write, sometimes a little bit harder, but at least it's safer to, uh, to use. For example, here you have an init call function where uh, we say that it accepts a name and a URL, but the name and the URL have to be a string. And it's, they're also both required because if they are not required, then you have to do it like that. Yes, that. Okay. It gives you also gives you errors. Like if you want to make the name required, then it gives an error on the URL because uh, an optional parameter uh, uh, cannot be in front of a required parameter. So this is the entry point. Um, we import some files that we need. Um, we're gonna go through a bit of this later. So it needs the room that we are gonna show later. It needs this function that I'm gonna show in a minute. And then it has the index HTML file, the CSS and all the icons that we need. So these are to ensure that they're bundled into the final distribution. And the final distribution is right here. Um, this is uh, when you build it with Webpack, then it will show up there. So we have a register form listener and a, a function called init call here. So once the file is loaded, which is immediately, uh, the register form function will be called. And what is the register join form listener function? It's a mouthful, at least. That's what it is. Register join form listener. It's uh, is a it's 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 a function where you uh, where we register the unsubmit when you click on the button in the form. So when you click on this button, then what happens? 
well, we prevent the default function uh, and then we hide the form. So we hide this whole thing. Uh, then we have, uh, we fetch the data from the name and the URL elements, which are this one and this one, which we created with the username and the room URL IDs. And then it runs the function uh, that we pass through this register join form listener. Uh, it passes the, the name element value and the URL element value. Um, so go back to the index.ts. So what it does is it registers that, that button. And then after all the necessary actions happen, we run this init call function. So the init call function is, uh, let me quickly look for, yes. Yeah, so it's, it's, it is, we'll create a new room, uh, which we have imported here with a URL, a name and a, uh, what does the true do? Uh, ask if it's a global room. It is a global room. Uh, there is one global room, right? So in case you want to implement breakout rooms later, then uh, you have smaller rooms inside of the global room. And I'll get to that in a bit or probably not today, but maybe later. Uh, so what does the global room do? So. What does the room do? So let's let's just take a look at this uh, room.ts file. First, we import a whole lot of stuff from the daily JS. Uh, we'll go over these uh, bit by bit later, but uh, this one is the one that we're going to be using soon, and that's just uh, the defaults. It's the daily iframe. And if you want to know what the daily iframe does exactly, then you can always look into the docs which I don't have open, but there is a handy button here. Um, so the daily iframe class. So this is the main entry point into the daily JS library. It has a lot of useful functions and maybe the very most important method is uh, this join one. And we'll get to that in just a few seconds. So we import a lot of other stuff that we'll get into later. Uh, we also have a lot of other enums, which you, which is a, a type scripting. But what we're doing, looking at right now is uh, this, and we'll go over the rest a little bit later once we get into that. Uh, so. Um, this one, this uh, is the URL of the room we'll be joining. Um, so the, let me go back a second. So let's go back to this. So we've passed a, a URL, a name and true. And that is what you see here in a constructor. So the constructor has a URL, it has the username and it has its global, which is then uh, all in uh, pass into the, the the class itself, and then we have this call object where we do a daily iframe dot create call object. Now, what does create call object do? So here's a function uh, which is the fact, uh, one of the factory methods that daily iframe has, and it creates a video call object. Um, and it, which is not isolated in an iframe. Okay, that makes sense because we don't want to have it isolated in an iframe. Um, so let's go, it, it actually explains it better in the block. So let's go into the block. Well, not better than in, in the docs, of course, but it explains it better why we need it right now. So, uh, okay. So we've done this. 
we are now constructing our room, which has a lot of, uh, uh, it explains a little bit what every uh, bit of the room class does here, or at least the uh, properties. Um, and then here, creating our call objects. In the call object configuration, we said subscribe tracks automatically. Um, yes, so that is this part, subscribe tracks automatically, and we have a daily config that we also set in the call object. There is uh, subscribe tracks automatically. We use this uh, uh, to turn off default track management and turn on manual track subscription. So we don't want everybody who joins uh, uh, the room uh, be subscribed to all other participant tracks as soon as they join, because as you saw here, um, well, here, once you're in, in the room here, oh, why does it keep doing that? Oh, you can move things around. That's also something we're going to create. Um, when, when you are in the room here, then you won't see anybody else. So it would be bad for bandwidth and bad for performance if you would be subscribed to, for example, the tracks that are in this room or the people who are not in the room. Um, yes. And then there is experimental Chrome video mute light off. This is basically a, uh, an experimental feature in Chrome where if you uh, during like the, uh, the uh, software version during the video off, like we're doing with WebRTC, where like it's happening uh, when you don't, like when you, when you say turn the video off, then it will also turn off the, uh, the, the little light on your hardware camera. It's uh that's nice because otherwise it just looks like you're always sending video even though you're not. Uh, then there is a cam simulcast and codings. Simulcast we talked about a little bit in, not, in a different video, but basically this, uh, by default, it sends multiple, uh, it sends multiple videos uh, in different resolutions. And with this cam, Simulcast and code is we can ensure that it doesn't send all different kinds of resolutions. And why are we doing this? Well, basically we want, only want to send one single layer, which is uh, this one with a bit rate of 600,000 and a frame rate of 30, because we only send as a low, we only use a low resolution video. Like the biggest resolution that we're doing is this one at the top, which is not that big, if, if, especially if you consider uh, it could also have been like the biggest, the widest screen. Um, so this video is only 200 by 160. And I think the maximum for the video is 200 by 200. And that's a lot different than sending like 1080p or something. So this will make sure that your uh, video has, that, that you are optimized for the use case that you have with these smaller videos. We do not, uh, it's, it's, no, don't, it doesn't happen very often that you need to use this, uh, to, to minimize the number of, uh, simulcast layers that you send. But, uh, in our case, it is useful. Okay. So got this, uh, the constructor and then when you after we create the call objects we listen to some of the uh, events that we have so there's a camera error event which only handles the camera error which by, for us it's just saying uh console.error um let's go back here and a whole bunch of other uh, events that we will go through once once we need it. I'm not. We're probably not going to go through everything, every single thing, because some are not that uh, interesting, but they are always useful to to listen to.
Um, so let's go a little bit further. Um, I'm, I'm just checking the block for a second, see if we are, if I've missed anything here. So we define a simulcast layer. Um, right. So what we're going to do, I missed this part. What we're going to do is, uh, we're going to limit the videos by 200 by 200 or 94 by 94 and we used it using set bandwidth but since once we use set bandwidth we're still sending three layers of uh, simulcasts we're still sending three simulcast layers by default where the highest will then be 200 by 200 and then the other two are lower than that so you have a chance that you get a very low uh quality video so and that because of that we are sending just one layer so you always get the highest quality video and that is 200 by 200. the next thing is what we're going to do is hooking up the uh so yes so we are now going to go into uh the handle joint meeting handle joint meeting method uh so when you joined the me join the meeting you uh, this event will be triggered. So you click on join, you get that. Uh, and then you, we set up sort of, uh, this, the worlds, the whole, the whole thing that we are going to go through. Uh, this is only relevant for the global room, of course, because there's only one world that you need to traverse to. Um, and we are. Wait, is this what I wanted to show? Yes. I'm just going to skip a little bit. It's, was this what I wanted to show? Handle joint meeting. Yeah. Handle joint meeting. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So we, we set up some listeners for the, for the buttons, which are, which are these buttons. So the camera on and off, the mic on and off uh screen share and leave call button well i'm not, not sure if we have the screen share here as well maybe enable screen share that is something we do later uh that's another blog post that we're another video that we're gonna use uh, we got we're gonna show how to do that so we have a register cam button listener which um and the mic button which is setting the local video uh, we get, we get the local video from, uh, from the participants method and let me check. So this uh, will say if, if it has video, so we have a local, we have a daily participant and then if it has video, it will return true. So if it doesn't have video, it will return false. And then we flip it around by saying not current set local video set local audio and then we have a leave button which does a little bit more so uh this will reset oh what is package x i should have known that um so i think it's explained a little bit here acknowledgements of data received which we're waiting for So that is basically, um, if there, if we're still waiting for these acknowledgements, then we're just removing them with reset pending acknowledgements. So it will clear all of that in case we're still waiting on them. Um, all the other things that we do is we'll leave the call object and we'll then destroy the call object. We'll destroy the world. Uh, we already initialize a new world for once we want to, uh, join it again. And then we again, show the join form. So what happens when you leave, if you click on the leave button, it will remove everything very fast. It will show the form again, and then you can just join it again because we already created a new world and then you'll be back where you are. Wait, is it through? Are, are we back where we were? Just checking it out for. It was just, uh, I guess, just a coincidence. Yes. 
not meant where you were. Just a coincidence. Um, so let's go back to the block. See if we miss anything. No, no. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the two more very important methods of the room class, and that is uh, join and set bandwidth. I'm gonna show you the join. So, first, gonna show you where we use it in this join. That is right here. So in the in the index file, we have this global room dot join. So this is immediately when we initialize the call. So when we click on the the join call button, we create the new room and then we immediately join. And then you get into this function. What does the function do? Well, it it joins through the call object that we've created, and. Uh, and if that doesn't work, then it'll just show the form again. I already explained a little bit how, how this works, but base, but this uh, uh, joins a uh, the video that uh, has the URL that you set up, a username that you set up, and then I use this token for the private room. Um, see, and then there's a set bandwidth. So we have this uh, bandwidth function, which I already sort of told you about a little bit earlier. Um, Unjoins uh, zone. So this will set the uh, the uh, camera constraints. I'm just gonna check when this will. Well. We'll get into a little bit later when we are calling this, but I am just going to... Is this where? Yes. Okay. So uh, in the constructor at the end, we uh, say this that set bandwidth, and then we have different bandwidth levels. We have an unknown bandwidth level, a tile, and a focus. And you start out with being a tile and not a focus. So this is when you are a tile. And this is when you are in focus right here. Oh, that was not what I meant. So this function is a bandwidth. Uh, it asks for, uh, it goes through here and has different levels. So if you have, uh, if you are a towel, then it will set the local bandwidth level to that tile, and then in the call object, it will run the set bandwidth function. And in the set bandwidth function, you can uh, send track constraints, which has like a standard tile size and a frame rate. And the frame rate will be lower when we have like these small tiles, because there could be a lot of people in small tiles. Uh, it's also very small, so you don't need a high frame rate. And the standard tile size is 94 by 94 pixels. You can of course change it to like 940, but I don't think that will be very useful. Just gonna check how that looks. Do I need to rerun it again? I will need to rerun it again. Never mind. This is how it is now. Um, 94 by 94, and if you are uh, focused, then it will be 200 by 200 with a slightly higher frame rate. Per video, thirty frames per second is is good. You don't need you don't need to have much higher than that, of course, because most videos are thirty frames per second. And if it's anything else, then tile focus and just give you a warning, and then doesn't modify it at all. So let's see what the blog says that I have missed, because there's probably a lot more that I've missed because Lisa has written a lot of this. Um, yes, yeah, so the usage warnings about the set button with API. So when, uh, uh, for most applications, it's, it's best to just leave the bandwidth to 
daily itself. Um, but if you are using it, just make sure that you also think about simulcast layers and things like that. So this is what it looks like when you're a tile. Uh, and this is when you're focused. Okay. Okay, so what it says here that our world that we have knows nothing about uh, the constraints. We've decoupled the daily API, the room calls basically, and the 2D world logic as much, much as possible. Um, and the world is handling any size of video track regardless of the constraints. And that is why we all only use log of warning and not an error or anything when you are giving the wrong level or an unrecognized level. Okay. Handle join meeting. So we go back to the handle join meeting function uh, method. Uh, always confuse difference between function and method, but hey, probably not the only one, right? At least you probably know what I meant. Um, okay, so let's go through the whole thing, the whole handle join meeting uh, function method thing. So we're getting the local participants uh, here, the event, the participants that local, which we're going to be using later. So that is you, the one who's walking through everything. Sorry, I was just, sorry, I was mute. I was just thinking that maybe we could have done event that participants that local, but that's not true because we, this is a function we're calling later. Okay. Um, so here we check if the bro user's browser and current room meet requirements for share screen share support and enable if so. Let's look at that, uh, not now, but later. Uh, uh, So here we receive the video and audio tracks of the participants. Um, and we'll be using that to, uh, where is it? To initiate the local user with the video track. The function world will, oh, the, the function world will use, oh, this is the, <coughs> sorry. This is the function that the world will use to instruct the room to subscribe to another user's track. Um, so if you are subscribing, okay, so this is a function that we, we come at, come on, we will see later when uh, you want to subscribe to someone else. So when you are in someone else's zone, for example. Or if you're close to someone, and same is this for the unsub tracks. And if you are going away from someone else, or if someone else will leave, then you can unsub from their from their track. The track is basically your video and audio things combined. And then we have on move. So uh, when uh, the world will call this when the user moves, and then it will update the position. And that will then be broadcasted. Yeah. So broadcast is something that we're gonna look at later as well. But we are basically using a uh, send app message. So that will uh, I can show you what that does. Send app message. So this will send a message to other participants so that everybody else also knows that you've been that you're you're moving because otherwise if you're moving and nobody else sees you moving then that's uh, not very useful um so this will send it to everybody else receipt session id okay that's uh, let's go back here 
So that is the on move, on move, yes. And we send it to all recipients. And this uh, on joins zone, if you are joining a specific zone, uh, or leave a specific, uh, leave some join, then it will update your bandwidth level. So if you are, uh, like, if you are in the global zone, then it will set the bandwidth level to a tile and it will stop your screen sharing because you're not allowed to screen share when you're a tile. Um, and it will disable the screen share button. And otherwise you will just, uh, you will be on focus. And it will also, all of this will be broadcasted to all other recipients so that they know uh, about your 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 state and then we have the on data dump so when a when a new user joins they need to know what you're where you are so when a new user joins you will just dump all your data all your uh, positioning data, your zone data, other data that you might want to send, it will, it will dump that to the new user that joins so that you, their worlds can be generated. Then it says show world, which will then uh, show the entire world, which we have created all immediately. I think that's this one, that is the world's column element. Does it all? I don't know if I call an entry. Um, Yeah, so it shows you this whole call thing, which has then all the buttons and everything. And what else does it do? It will remove the entry. It will display it or not. Okay, so it will basically switch between the form, the visible form thing and the uh, uh, the world that we are going to traverse. Yeah, and then we have all the callbacks for the worlds. So we we created a new world in the beginning of, of the file. And we added these callbacks to that world function. Real worlds class. I keep messing up my words. But I hope that that's still you're still able to understand what I'm saying. Um, all these callbacks. Then we start the world, which begins the update loop. So basically, update loop is. Let's see if I can show you where, how we do it here. Um, start. Uh, this is probably something that will happen later. Anyway, the update loop is uh, if you're using sort of a 2D environment, you wanna uh, you, you have to know like you have to go by frame by frame. The update loop is like the frames, so it needs to know where you are right now, uh, how fast you wanna how uh, fast you wanna move through a world. How uh, fast other people move through a world. Uh, if you, for example, press the, the right arrow key, then in the update loop, it checks whatever keys you've pressed and then it goes every loop. It sees like, okay, should I move this one pixel to the right or should I wait one more loop? Okay, now I need to move one pixel to the right. That kind of thing is what the update loop does. It just keeps looping and looping and updating the world around you, the 2D environment. Um, okay, okay, that's not the right place. Okay, and create and initialize the local user. So, uh, initial in the local user, is that something that we're going to talk about today? I probably, but it, it will, uh, okay. So we're going to go in a little bit deeper into some of the methods here. 
Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so let's see, are we also going into... Oh, most of this I've already told. That's good. So let's see what I missed. Uh, we'll, we'll get into the uh, init in local user as well. So here it's... As we saw above, the room provides the world with a callback it can use to instruct us to subscribe and unsubscribe from other participants' tracks. That is... Sub to tracks and unsub from tracks. Uh, this is done by passing the session ID of the relevant remote participant and then using daily's update participant call object instance method. So there's this one and that one. So it's, we're talking about so sub to users track. Yeah. So you update participants. So we pass the session ID from the from the user. We update the participant, the specific participant. So and we say, okay, we want to subscribe to the following tracks. So we want to subscribe to this person audio, this person's video, and this person's screen video, which is screen share. Uh, and if you want to unsubscribe, then uh, we set them all to false. Unsubscriptions are not supported in peer-to-peer -peer mode. Attempting to unsubscribe in peer-to-peer -peer mode will silently fail, so let's not even try. Okay. So, I th think we're going to go into this a little bit later as well, but uh, we are sometimes, we are either in peer-to-peer -peer mode, so that is when everyone is connected to everybody else, once we get to a fifth user, then we will switch from peer to peer to uh, SFU mode, where everybody is connected to a single SFU, which is a box in the middle, basically. And that SFU sends it back to everybody else. So that will limit the amount of uh, data that you need to send and the data that you need to receive. Unsubscribing is not a thing in this peer-to-peer -peer mode. So you're always subscribed to anybody else. So once you are in SFU, then you can unsubscribe. Uh, I think we probably have a, a nice image on how SFU looks like and how peer-to-peer -peer looks like. Um, but I... Uh, I if I, I don't have the tools right now, but I also wanted to draw it out, but I don't have the tools. So maybe well, I'll do it later if we still have some time left. And if you're interested, of course. So, um, by the way, if you have any questions during this whole thing, then just ask in the chat or ask in the comments if you're on YouTube. Both are fine, you'll get an answer quickly. We're already like 45 minutes into the whole thing. And I say, let's use the chat a little bit late. <laughs> um, so that's what we update participant calls made. Uh, and then we have handle participant updated which I don't think we've gotten into. No, so participant updated and participant joined and participant left. Those are all functions that are also in the constructor. Um, and that's where we get all the uh, the acknowledgements. We get a session ID. Uh, we initiate remote participants if, if the participant is joined. When it's updated, we... Uh, update the whole user in the world uh, and we get tracks in, in case we uh, need them. Uh, it's going to get participant tracks. So here we get the, like the video and the audio and the screen video. Uh, Except if we don't want the tracks, or if there are no tracks, then 
will just return null for everything. Otherwise, we'll just uh, return if they are playable. And when we the re when the receive when retrieving the trackers, we return the user's video and audio tracks if they are playable. If they don't exist or are not playable, return null for each. Next, the world we we call the world's update user method. Are we? We are probably doing that. Oh yeah, here. We're calling the world's update user methods with the participant session ID, name, and tracks. Note that the participant username is not included in the payload we get from participant join event. The participant update event is sent with the username, which is why we give it to the world at this point as well. Okay. So if you are with the participant joined, which is here. Uh, okay. Then you don't get the username. If the update participant is our local participant, we call update local. Okay, let's check if Okay, so we update the user in the world and then say, okay, if we are if we are this person, then update the local person and then you can update the micro microphone button and uh, set the yeah, the right state. Uh, updates local call controls and reflects the state of the user's camera and microphone. Yes, so. You say like, okay, is audio on? Yes, it's on. Update this button to make sure that it looks on, but also say that in this state, in the local state, we also say it, know that it's true. Um, broadcast, I already explained that. Uh, handle new participants. We went over that shortly. Handling incoming data. Okay, wait. One thing to remember is that the order of participant joins and joins meeting is events is not guaranteed. For this reason, there might be a situation where we're sending data to a participant who's just joined the meeting before they are fully ready to handle the data we sent. This is why, with, why in the method above, we set up an interval to not just send the data dump to the new participant once, but send it repeatedly until they acknowledge the receipt. Okay. So that's this one. No, is that this one? No. And the participant joined. So as long as uh this the call objects, the participants. Let's see if the set interval if this dot call object dot participants as ID is false. Then we clear pending acknowledgement. and return it otherwise send data dump to participant which SID is this so this is the session ID from the participant that joins uh, Okay, so I'm just looking at the chat and I was I was slightly confused to be honest because I thought like the username uh, uh, is here so we should uh, 
we should, we are receiving the username and now i'm looking in the chat and lisa herself says that she fixed it and we should now also get the username uh, and participant joined so we can update the demo codes to use that okay well that's good um i'll uh we will update that later so if you see some changes then we probably used a different version and you're probably using a different version so uh yeah so we are we're looping through the the we keep checking if the acknowledgements uh, if if the uh uh the user has acknowledged their rece receiving of uh um the data and uh if they have then uh we stop the whole the whole intervals loop also there was also the uh here is reset pending acknowledgement so if people are if you are leaving the room uh then you will clear that interval that we which i just talked about so that you don't keep sending even though you're not there anymore you're trying to send because that's what an interval otherwise will do um, and then we have some handling some incoming data from other participants handle a message um which so this is uh so we've looked at updated we look at joint just check up handle participant left so when uh a particular participant leaves then we also clear the pending acknowledgement and then we remove the user from our world and then we also have the app message message which we handle the app message okay so we have the app message event where we uh when someone sends us an app message so with the broadcast function we can send the app message but we can also receive messages of course and here in the handle app message we we resolve that so we uh look at what kind of message we've received for example position change so we can update that participant's position which which is where they are in the world and then the zone change so that is if they are leaving or entering specific zones uh, and then we also have a, a thing called dump which we then uh, update everything so uh, we update the zone oh, by the way also broadcasts and acknowledgements first that we have received this dump so that their interval can be cancelled. Then we have the update participant zone where uh, it's the same as this one. And uh, if the zone is in a global zone, uh, the zone ID is a global zone, then we also update the participant position. And then if we received an acknowledgement from someone else, so that is this one, then uh, we say uh, const. Then we clear that pending that one pending acknowledgement so that the interval loop is broken. Uh, and the participant left. All right, and that is it for. Uh, showing a little bit how the room is being set up, how, uh, how we're joining a daily call, how we are listening to, wait, let me just show myself, how we are listening to uh, uh, all the messages that come in, how we send messages to everybody using the broadcast. We've also looked at how we set the bandwidth to a smaller, uh, uh, do a smaller resolution and we also use simulcasts to just have one single layer instead of like the three layers that we normally send um so this was this was quite a lot to to get in one go and uh it's not everything that we are doing in well it is everything that we're doing in the room but it's not like the whole world building so this is this is how the room looks. This is joining the room, uh, updating participants in the room, uh, sending 
uh, handling errors. We just looked at it very shortly, but also um, making sure that you don't automatically subscribe to tracks from everybody using uh, uh, one of the properties in a create call object. Um, yeah, I think we've gone through quite a lot today uh, and we still have plenty of more to go. So if this was the first video you were watching, I, I do recommend watching like the previous one, part one. Um, but I hope you can also join us like in the next weeks where we uh, next week are actually going to be running a 2D world for for everybody uh, using using Pixie.js as our rendering framework. Uh, the week after we'll be looking at uh, implementing spatial audio and video. So user proximity and sort of building an audio graph. The week after that we'll be uh, creating those interactive focus zones uh, so that you can uh, broadcast and gather smaller groups. Uh, and then we'll, and the week after we'll be adding screen share in our, our, our demo. And finally, we're actually going to be using, uh, robots and Jest to test all our spatialization features. That's also going to be a lot of fun. Um, so I hope that you've all enjoyed today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can, uh, ask in, uh, uh, in our support, if you go to daily.co and click on the contact button, you can also just ask in on Twitter. Uh, we are at try daily, one word, try daily, or you can ask me, uh, at Jane underscore mast. And, uh, or go to LinkedIn. We're also on LinkedIn. Uh, and if you want to, uh, be part of one of the live streams, which maybe not be a live coding, but maybe you just want to show off some cool stuff that you've be, that you've made with Daily, then uh, just get in touch with me or someone else from Daily, and we'll get back to you. So thanks again for joining today. I hope you all have a nice Wednesday and the rest of the week. Uh, for uh, for the Europeans out there, uh, have a good heat wave. I know I will. Uh, and I will see you all hopefully next week. All right. Thank you. Bye. I'm trying to find a button. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.